can't stop it. It's coming to a town near you. It used to be called contemporary. Some call it relevant. We're so cool, we call it contemporvent. Young hip guy welcoming all with graffiti and cool glasses. I welcome everybody with arms wide open, revealing my tattoo so you know I have a past. Quirky transition to band. Invite everyone to stand. Let's do it. This is the song that everyone knows. It's the song that everyone knows. My new song that nobody knows, nobody knows this song. I want you to learn this song and buy my record in the bookstore after the service. I just want to invite the ushers up as we prepare for our offering. Hmm. Feel free to give if you feel led. It's between you and God, but we're tracking it. One man has all the answers. I have all the answers. Showing a picture of a puppy and or a baby from an impoverished third world nation speaking softly to draw you in and then emphatically driving home my point on pause whispering repetition still pausing pained expression long prayer so that the worship leader can get back on stage this is the closing song with strings that'll make you cry. Coming soon to your town, a new kind of church. You will be lifted high and challenged to grow. We call that Grotivation. You call this Sunday morning. It's great. Isn't it good when you have plants 
sometimes and God just steps in. We're going to pretend it's because he wanted y'all to talk together longer. Truth is, it, it might be not working. We really have no idea why, but that's okay because we're here together. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Sorry, I just saw somebody on night. It made me really excited because I hadn't seen him yet. So, we're glad that you guys are here. Like I said earlier, we know you can choose any church. We're glad you chose to come to Connect Church of Abilene this Sunday on Baptism Sunday. It is a big day. We've already had one additional per person come in. It was really cool. Yeah. Not going to lie. Made me almost cry. Little boy talking to him about what baptism is. Talking to him about salvation. Man, if that don't get you jacked up, pumped up, and excited, you're the problem. Just being honest with you. You're the problem. And it needs, you know, because there's nothing more awesome than when somebody comes to know Jesus. And there's nothing even more awesome when somebody decides to take their relationship with Jesus to the next level. Amen? All right, so we have a couple of announcements. It won't take very long. We've got a lot to do today. But the first one is on the 3rd. Everyone say the 3rd. All right, on the 3rd of October, we are going to be having a uh, November, this summer. Listen, I, I told you I had a pass. I'm not going to try to play there. Leave me alone. All right? Uh, it's Ninja Alzheimer's. I can jump back and forth. It's cool. So, uh, on the 3rd, we will be meeting at the Meadows. The Meadows. Everyone say the Meadows. So where are we going to be on November 3rd? The Meadows. Look, you guys are already awesome. So we're going to be at the Meadows. We're going to have a good time with fellowship and food and friends. And I don't know any other good F words, so we're just going to leave it at that. Food, fellowship, and friends. And yeah, Pastor just got nervous. It's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, all y'all want to know. That's cool. Uh, so but we're going to have that. It's going to be a good time of fellowship. Uh, the next thing that we have coming up is we have a special guest that's going to be here. One of our overseers of the church, uh, his name is Darren Rains. He is going to be here uh, on the 17th of November, and he's going to be sharing. He uh, has a church in Oklahoma. He has been one of the first launch churches uh, with Art Association of Related Churches. I've met the dude. He is on fire. He is jacked up. Man, bring your friends. Bring anybody you know because, man, he has got a word to bring for this house. And I'm super pumped and excited for everything that God's doing. And then I want to make one last thing known to you guys. We have a youth group, and it is called The Connection. Come on. If you are part of The Connection youth group, how many of us, I mean, it's awesome, isn't it? Listen, we got to go to the camp. I got to hang out with a bunch of kids. I realized how old I was hanging out with these kids. I don't know where they get their energy from. I don't really care. I just want to tap into it. So if you're old, we do need some people that maybe want to serve. Maybe you can tap into some of that energy at the connection. But it is a great opportunity for our youth from grades 6 to 12 to get to experience the life-giving message directed directly at your students to challenge them to be all that God has created them to be. Listen, our young people, those are the generation that's to come that is going to set the standard for how Christianity is spread throughout the world. And we have to do our part. Listen, if you're a parent, I'm a parent. I challenge you, get your kids plugged in and get your kids connected. And the reason being is because they matter to the kingdom of God. Listen, they matter to this house, but more importantly, they matter to God. See, Jesus died on the cross, not just for you, not just for me because we're old. He died on the cross for everybody. And listen, it's our job to help lead, guide, and take our kids closer to Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you this as a parent. The closer they get to Jesus, the easier the rest of your days go. The easier the rest of your life goes. And when your kids are serving God, it makes you pumped up. That's not Ashley. Ashley was on the phone with me last night. She's like, I'm just so proud. My kids always make fun of Ashley because she talks with this awesome accent. And she's like, I'm so proud. And my kids, look at what they're doing. And if that doesn't make you excited, you hear that? And I challenge you guys, open your heart for everything that God has, everything that He wants to do. And listen, we normally hand out connect cards at this point, and we hand out offering envelopes. I'm going to give that to Adam to do later on while we're transitioning uh, to get changed for baptism. But I want to leave you with this one last thought when I'm done. The one last thought I have for you what is it this week that you held on to, that you took and you made it your friend this week? Maybe it's something that happened in your life, maybe it's something in your marriage. Maybe it's one of your kiddos. Maybe it's a situation that you created on your own and you're trying to blame everybody else. What is that one thing that you held on to this week? My challenge to you is this. You take that one thing, and this is my promise, and it's not a promise for me, it's a promise for God. If you take that one thing, and you take it before Jesus, and you lay it down at His feet, I'm just going to let you know He's big enough to handle it. And He wants to take that 
wants to mold it, and he wants to turn it into a testimony and a story. Because in Revelation, it says, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus, and the word of our testimony. Let's enter into, into prayer real quick, and then we'll enter back into worship. Father God, I thank you that today we give it to you. Today is your day, Lord. And the things that we don't have held on to, the things that we've made ours and we haven't given to you, Lord, we just take them right now and we lay them before you. Lord, as we enter into this time of worship, Lord, you can ex explain with everything that within us. Lord, we declare that you are the most high God. Lord, we declare that you are everything that we need. You are our ever, ever, ever loving supply when we need help. So my cry right now is, Lord, help us. Jesus, help us. Jesus, come into our lives. Lord, change us from the inside out. And we worship you with everything we have. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and stand. He didn't say, 
the God that's in heaven far away. Uh, he says, personal. Come on, he said, my Father that's in heaven. We get to worship Him. We get to praise Him. He gave us a choice. He said, if you want to, if you'll search me out, if you'll chase me down, He said, I'm unwilling to leave you alone. I'm unwilling to leave you the same. If you've got something you need or you've got an issue that you're dealing with, He said, I'm unwilling to let that settle the way it is. He said, I've got an answer for you. He says, you've got a problem, I've got the answer. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. I thank you for not leaving us alone. I thank you for chasing us down, for pulling us up, for pulling us away from the direction that we were going. I thank you for infilling and indwelling us, Father. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that you sent unto us. Thank you. 
serve you, to look to you, to seek you, to want you, to desire you. Thing. If you want to get back. 
not the child is still there. Yes. You can still do it. That's right. We've got shirts. I think we've got maybe a couple pairs of shorts. If not, we've dumped in jeans before. Come on. I think our first baptism. So, so we are one year old. I could. 
couldn't love my wife the way I was supposed to. Because I didn't love myself. You see, if you want a healthy marriage, or even healthy relationships, God's got to be centered of your life. God's got to be the one that you place there. You see, it's God can't accidentally end up at the center of your life. Do you understand that? A lot of the, a lot of people just think that God's just got to just jump right in the middle of your life and be like, hey, I'm here. I'm the center of your life. But God doesn't do that. God says, I need you to seek me. You know, my favorite scripture, and I think, if I quote it every Sunday, I'm sorry, but I love the scripture. It says, without faith, Hebrews 11, 6, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because one must believe that He is. You see, you can't even love a God that you don't believe even exists. But He goes on to say that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So that tells me that if I am using this substance that God said that He placed inside of me, He said that I have given each man a measure of faith. And if you'll use the faith that I put inside of you, you're pleasing. But if I can't even love myself, how can I do that? If I can't even search and seek, much less worship a God that I can't see, if I can't even have a good relationship with somebody that I can see, how can I have a relationship with someone that I can't see? You see, that's where faith comes in. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, when there's nothing else in your life that says that I can take another step, when there's nothing else in your life that says the cliff that I'm standing at, if there's anything beyond it, when I can't even see if God is, is there or or away from me, and there's a there seems to be uh, immeasurable distance between God and myself. How do I go from where I'm at to where I need to be? What is the stepping stone that I step on? How do I step out and step up and, and go and accomplish what God has put in my heart if I can't even? It's this thing called faith. It's this thing that God said, I've given you some, but I need you to use it. To get from where you are in life, right here, to move from here to where God wants you. Because I want to tell you something, and we say this all the time around here, you were born on purpose for a purpose. God's got a purpose for you in your life. He's got something that He needs you to do. He's giving you an ability, a talent. He's giving you something inside of you that's, that's wanting to get out, but you're not sure how I do that. I'm not sure how I go from where I'm at to where God wants me to be. And that's where faith comes in. The evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for. You see, the Bible says that this thing called faith that we lean upon is a substance that I can actually create a step with. It's a substance that I can step out on. You see, I may not can see the entire pathway, but maybe I can take one step. Maybe I can, once I take that one, I can take one more step. 
with the understanding that if I fall, if for some reason I miss the mark, God will catch me. You know, we sang the song of split the seeds, right? And that's my attitude in life. If I come up to the ocean in my life, if I come up against the giant in my life, if I come up against something that seems like I can't cross it, like it's too much for me, there's only two things that can happen. I'm either going to walk on water or he's going to split the seed for me. I don't have any other option. That's faith. Faith is an ultimatum. This is it. This is what I'm going to do. The three Hebrew children that they got thrown into the, to the furnace, the phrase that they say, they said, our God will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still going to serve him. See, it wasn't an option to back out. You see, some of us want to come up to it and go, well, I have an option of backing out. But when you serve God and you've come so far, you don't have an option to back out. Faith erases what's behind you and places something in front of you. And that's what we follow. That's what we do. This next series that we're going to start, we're going to start in a few weeks. Um, like Jamie had said, um, we got service here next week, and, and we are, in case this is your first time here, we are a portable church. Okay, like this hot tub we don't have up every Sunday, you know, and like after service, just like chill for a little bit, you know, and like sit in and kind of, you know, aches and pains are gone. That's, that's not here every Sunday. So we are a portable church. So what that means is that everything you see when you walked in this morning, when you walked in the front door and you came in the lobby and all the curtains that are up and all the tables that are up and everything that's here, when you walked in here and we've got our pocket drag on the back and on the front and all of our music stuff and all of the chairs and all of our sound equipment and everything up here that, that the, the band has put up, none of that's here when we get here on Sunday mornings. It's all in boxes in the back. And we put that out. We do that because we love you. Did you know that there were people that love you enough this morning? There were people that came in here at 6 a.m. this morning and set a baptistry up and turned it on so that it wouldn't be cold when you guys got in. I mean, we want, you know, we want you to feel something, but it doesn't have to be cold when you feel it. You know? I mean, if you go under, you know, maybe we want to be able to warm. For the right reason. Oh, y'all can't say that.
isn't perfect doesn't mean that God's not leading. Because if God was, if our life that we followed was perfect, Paul never would have been beaten. He never would have been shipwrecked. He never would have been stoned. Not that kind of stone. <laughs> but I will say this. If you have friends in your life that you're wanting them to get in the Word, just tell them that there's a few people in the Bible that got stoned. <laughs> and let them go look it up for themselves. <laughs> we got a hand clap. We know how to pass it here, don't we? I 
just want to encourage you. Whatever you're going through, though you can't see the next step in front of you, it doesn't even, the pathway doesn't even clear. I encourage you to take another step. I encourage you to use the faith that God has put inside of you to grow that faith. To learn more about whatever situation you do. Because that's going to take you to the next level. Amen? Amen. So we're going to make a little bit of a transition here. That None of that was even in anything that I had. So it was for somebody. So I'm hoping you guys got something. And if you didn't, it's your fault. <laughs> I'm just going to be on that stand. Because there was times I was sitting where you were sitting, and I'm like, I didn't get up the day, and God was like, yeah, that's your fault. <laughs> like, you could come in expecting something, you could receive something today, and I didn't get up the day, 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 We'll see. We'll count at the end, right? But if you, you, you are signed up to get baptized, you've signed up to get baptized, or you want to get baptized, I'm just going to ask that you step back here tomorrow. Go ahead and go back there. Change clothes. If you don't have a change of clothes, and jump in with the jeans on. I said, J.D., did you get the jeans on when we baptized you? Yeah. Yeah, so J.D. was one of those that, like, jumped in. You know what I mean? I mean, he just, like... And Miss Margie, she and the kids, she and the children. All right, so Miss Margie, right over here, the children, the, the, the lady over here, I'm going to tell you, if you've got kids over here, they will come home today and tell you they absolutely love Miss Margie. Because her and my wife, they go over who's the best teacher, and, you know, they do a good job at it. But Miss Margie, man, she's, she's this little Mexican lady, right? And I'm in the pool. And she's coming at me like taking earrings off and bracelets off. And I don't know what's going to happen. And she just jumps in the pool. And she's like, today's my day. She was just ready. Okay. It was time. And she calls this, she calls uh, September 30th her rebirth day. Because it was the day that she finally gave back in the Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for who you are and what you're doing. I thank you for the ones that are being baptized this morning, that you have laid that on their heart, Father, that they want to profess and confess and want to come public with their faith. They want to show forth who they are and you and what you have done in their life. And they want to do it publicly here at Connect Church. And I thank you for those people, Father. Lord, I thank you for the ones that are going to give this morning. I thank you that they are blessed, the one to live on, Lord, all they can ask, think, or even dream, Father. I thank you that you open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon our life, Father. And that you keep the devourer from taking away what you've given us. Father, you're truly an amazing God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. So. So there was a few people that had asked JD if he could if he could baptize them today, and absolutely yes, um, 100% yes, and it actually worked out really well this week. So we went from we went from eight to, to twelve to fifteen today. Uh, and that's a big thing. You know, there's 15 people that want to say that I'm going public with my faith. I want people to know that I serve God. Okay, so all these little people up front are the kids. So this wasn't just really short adults. I just saw your mom in the baptism. So, uh, so JB and I, y'all just have to go. So, anyway. um, so we'll go ahead. I'm gonna, you give me just a second. I'm going to take this microphone off where we can kind of use it a different way. So, Kurt broke the other microphone. It's all Kurt's fault. You bleed my cars. You run my roads. You break my chains. This is one of the ones 
stuff, but I'm gonna tell you something. Look at that smile. He's to throw that smiley pearl on him. There it is. <laughs> no, no matter what he goes through, no matter what life throws at him, we all have our moments, but Adam, man, he puts that smile on. And I'm gonna tell you something. That's what Jesus is after. This is an example of what Jesus is. And this young man is is just I, I just I don't know. Man, I love the kid. You got anything you want to say? I love Jesus.
me. I'm good. <laughs> JB and Amanda took in both of their nephews, um, and they now call them their boys. Yes. So. Yeah. You said you were good. Yeah, I'm lying. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God is bigger yes. than the circumstances in your life and the things that have been spoken over you your whole life. I am the second generation. He is the third generation of just horrible things that have been spoken over and a destiny that is not to be proud of. See, the tattoo I showed off earlier, it represents something. And he gets to fulfill it. It represents when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. See, there's a shield that says butter. It's supposed to say mother. <laughs> we all got a pass. Uh, some of us can't smell it. Um, and it says butler, and it's a shield, and that represents the family crest. The next thing is an angel with a sword breaking through that family crest. And that represents the generational curses being broken over the butler family. And it ends with me. And now he gets to live in the freedom of what God has intended for him. Because we, we paved the way. Listen, we broke the addictions. They're gone in the name of Jesus. And they will not come back to our family. In, in infidelity, people not, in not being faithful to their wives, it's done. It's dead. But what is not dead? It's the risen Savior who forgives you today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen.
want to tell them? Why are you here? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, tell you the story. I did Dalen's wedding with, uh, with his wife. And Scott came up to me after service and he said, in, in the Scott fashion, I learned you did a really good job on that sermon. And I said, I said you got to hear me preach sometime. Something to that effect. And I said, uh, next time I preach, will you come and listen to me preach? And he said, yeah, I'll come. And you, you were true on your word. So when I preached last time, there was Scott on the back row. And, and he's not a regular bust up in the middle of some brick and mortar. You know? But he was here. And he made that decision that day that he wanted to take his faith and his belief to the next level. Yes. Which was to get baptized and represent the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah.
church is watching dads and sons get baptized together. Church is watching teenagers make decisions to follow God. So we love you guys. We thank you.